Okay, we're given a demand function and a, a supply function. Our goal is to find the equilibrium quantity. We'll actually do one better and find the entire equilibrium point. We're going to find the producer surplus and the consumer surplus. So as we get going on this, first let's go ahead and set these equal to each other to help us find that equilibrium quantity and then the point. So 3267 divided by the square root of x is going to be set equal to 3 times the square root of x. To solve this down, we want to get all the x's on one side. Can't really solve for x while it's stuck in the denominator, so let's go ahead and multiply both sides by the square root of x. On the left hand side, uh, multiplying and dividing both by the square root of x, kind of going to undo each other, do the opposite operations. So 3267 equals 3 multiplied by the square root of x times the square root of x makes just x to the first power. To finish this up and get x by itself, we'll divide both sides by 3. So I get x equals 1089. So technically, 1089 would be that quantity q. I'll put a q star because that's what our book does, is it uses q star and p star for this ordered pair, the equilibrium point. Now if I want to find that uh, price that goes along with this quantity, I can go ahead and fill into either one of these functions. We'll get the exact same answer. I'm going to choose to use the supply function, so the supply function evaluated at 1089 is going to be 3 multiplied by the square root of 1089, which works out to be 99. Now why I'm going ahead and making the entire equilibrium point is we're going to need that to find the producer surplus and the consumer surplus in just a second. Alright, next up let's go ahead and find the producer surplus. So this is where we use Q star times P star or multiply together our equilibrium point. The value for Q multiplied by the value for P and we subtract away the integral from 0 to that value of Q 1089 but this time we're going to utilize the supply function. So the 3 times the square root of x dx. Alright, from here let's go ahead and multiply together 1089 multiplied by 99 gives us 107,811. Minus, I'm going to bring that 3 out in front. We still have the integral from 0 to 1089 but this time I'm going to rewrite that x, instead of having a square root over the top, I'm going to write it as raised to the one half power. So I haven't integrated yet, I'm just rewriting it so that I can utilize the power rule. Alright, from here we bring along our 107,811 minus the 3 comes along. Now as we integrate, we're going to increase the exponent by 1, so we have 1 half plus 1, or 1 half plus 2 halves makes 3 halves. And because it's a fractional exponent, instead of dividing by 3 halves, I'm going to go ahead and multiply by its reciprocal 2 thirds. Now this still gets evaluated between 0 and 1089. So 107,811 minus, in this case, our 3's are going to get to cancel, right? We're multiplying and dividing by 3. So we're still going to be left with a 2. And then we have 1089 gets filled in raised to the 3 halves power, and we could subtract away 2 multiplied by 0 raised to the 3 halves power, but that uh, 0 raised to the 3 halves power is still 0, so we're going to end up subtracting away at the end here, 0. So overall, my final answer, what I ended up getting was 35,937 for our producer surplus. Next, let's find the consumer surplus. So to find the consumer surplus, what we want to do is we're going to go ahead and integrate between 0 and 1089. This time we're going to use the demand function. So 3267 divided by the square root of x dx minus, we subtract away when we multiply together the values from our equilibrium point. So it's a little bit backwards from the producer surplus this time. Now I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this so it looks a little bit nicer. I'm going to bring that constant out in front, 3267, and then the integral between 0 and 1089. 
And instead of having the square root of x in the denominator, I'm going to go ahead and use a few of our exponent rules, thinking about that square root as being to the 1 half power. Then I can move it up to the numerator by making it a negative exponent minus, and then this is still 107,811, being subtracted away this time. Now let's integrate. All right, so the constant comes along, 3267. Now as we integrate, we're going to increase the exponent by 1, so negative 1 half plus 1 makes positive 1 half, and then we want to divide by that new exponent, but because it's a fraction, we can multiply by its reciprocal instead. So that's 3267 multiplied by 2. All right, that gets evaluated between 0 and 1089. And then we subtract away the 107,811. All right, so as we evaluate this, we're going to get 6534. And then we, we have 1089 raised to the 1 half power minus 6534 zero raised to the one half power and then we at the end we have to subtract away that 107,811. Well this all works out to be same thing as the square root there 107,811 by chance. Alright so that is going to go as our consumer surplus for this problem. It doesn't always work out to be the exact same as uh, the equilibrium point quantity and price multiplied together it just happened to in this one. All right, so I hope this helps out. Good luck as you're working on these.